everybody. How's it going tonight? Wait for some people to pop on here. My lighting looks brutal tonight. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on with my lighting here. It's making me look shiny. Hopefully it doesn't make the painting look shiny. Let's see if that's better. Oh, well, we'll see as we go. As you guys come on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from tonight. I'm just gonna find you on my laptop here, just so I can see your comments a lot better. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Hi, Pam. She says, I just did your gnome painting and loved it. That's awesome. Yeah, I did that like two nights ago, I think. It wasn't that long ago. I don't usually have paint nights this close together, but I thought for December we could all use some, some closer fun. So <laughs> I booked them a little closer than normal. Yeah, it's snowy here too. I have, um, it's cold and snowy. That's why I have on my sweatshirt tonight. <laughs> Usually I look a little more classy, but I was like, I'm cold. So I'm putting on a sweater, but at least it goes with the theme. Oh, you know what? I never changed my angle here. Hold on one second. I'm backwards to you guys. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now you can see it the right way. Awesome. So we'll give everyone some time to find me here. Hot cocoa night here. Yeah, I have some hot tea. I just, it's a, it's a hot drink, feeling comfortable <laughs> paint night. I've got some Christmas uh, PJ bottoms on. I never do this one painting. I usually have like just regular, you know, everyday clothes on, but I was like, I need to be cozy tonight. It is close to Christmas and I just have that cozy cold feeling. So I'm gonna be as comfortable as possible while I'm painting with everybody. Hopefully you guys are all wearing something pretty comfortable too. Move this a little closer here. So tonight's painting is wasn't even gonna be a paint night. I just painted it cause I just felt, sometimes when I feel something I paint it. So um, I just felt like painting this and then I posted it up and it had a really good response. So a lot of people wanted to learn how to paint it. So I thought, well, we can make it a paint night then. That's no problem. Judy, you're in your PJs too, good. That's the way for it to be. It's eight o'clock here. I'm not sure what time it is or everyone else is, but it's 8 p.m. here. I homeschooled during the day. I worked all night. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, I'm, I'm in need of comfort <laughs> and relaxation. So that's where we're going with tonight's theme. I live in Ontario, Canada, so I'm close to Michigan. I'm just across the border. Well, Detroit, Michigan. Good, lots of people are in their PJs. We should have had, like I said, I think I said this a couple paint nights ago. In January, we should do like a cozy PJ paint night. I think that would be awesome. I still see some people trickling in, lots of people saying hi from all over. Welcome everybody. Um, if you haven't joined me for a paint night before, um, just know this is very laid back. Um, there's lots of time in between steps 
and I always communicate with everybody a lot. So um, in between steps, if you need more time, just write it. Um, usually once a step happens, then we I wait for your thumbs up to tell me you're ready. When I see a majority, depending on how many people are watching, um, I think we're at about two, 270 tonight. Um, when I see a majority of thumbs go up, then I move on. So just uh, have communication back and forth since I can't see you and that's how I'll know you're ready. But um, this is all freehand tonight. There's no stenciling for this one. I'm gonna explain each step in detail. I'll hold this closer um, if it's something smaller so you can see. If the light is reflecting badly, just let me know in the comments. Last time for some reason I had an issue with that, um, which is odd because I don't usually, but um, I must have just had my lighting placed wrong or something was going on. But um, anyways, yeah, so we're just gonna enjoy tonight. Take this time for us. And I'm going to go through the supply list in a few minutes here. Yes, and there will be a replay. As soon as this is done live, I'm going to replay it um, under videos on my page. So as soon as I'm done, you can go back and watch it anytime you like. Um, and then I will eventually, because this is a free one, I will put it on YouTube. Um, usually within a few days, um, I usually put them up on YouTube. So right away on my Facebook page, but um, YouTube will be an extra couple days. Um, also, I see some links for hackers coming through right now or scammers. Don't click any links in the comments, please. Um, they are going to ask for money or some sort of probably credit card information. Um, don't click any links as you're coming on. The only link I'm going to put in the comments tonight is going to be to my next paint night, but I will tell you when I'm doing that and it will say Artistic Chris or Crystal Anger beside it. So if you see anything that does not have my name on it, do not click link, please. Um, I don't know why they think that we don't know this by now, but <laughs> surprise, we know. <laughs> this isn't a shock. I'm going to try while we're waiting here to get rid of a few of these. Very highly annoying, these people. <laughs> so yeah, do not click these links, please. If you're coming on, these are scammers. I don't know why they don't just grab a paintbrush and start painting. They probably have a lot more fun than trying to scam people, but that's their choice, I guess. But I say grab a paintbrush, grab a hot drink, put your PJs on, stop scamming people, and paint with us. Okay, well, they're going to keep popping up here. Just don't click the links, please. Um, I can't control them all while I'm teaching people how to paint, so um, just ignore them. All right. Okay, so we are going to go over the supply list super quick, and then we will start painting. So what we have is, um, we're gonna start with a paper plate here and that's just what we're gonna put our paints on. And then I have some napkins here to wash my brushes or dry them. Um, we have a cup with water here. 
Um, what else do we have? We have a blow dryer. I'm not really sure we're gonna need the blow dryer tonight. I just like to say bring it just in case we need a quick dry job, but um, I'm gonna try to alternate tonight so we don't need it. Um, but I did bring a blow dryer. If you don't have one, it's okay. Um, acrylic paint dries super fast, so you'll be fine. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do my best to alternate where we're painting on the canvas tonight. And then our brushes, um, I have um, a three quarter inch, like big round head here. It's um, almost like an oval. Um, if you don't have anything like this, you can get away with doing what you need to do tonight with this or just like a smaller round head. But this one we're gonna be using, I don't normally use these in my tutorials, but we're gonna make a little bit of fluffy clouds. So if you have that one, that's great. Um, then I have a three quarter inch flat head. If you have a half inch, that will work too just something a little bit bigger. And then I have a small flat head here and I have a detail brush. So this one is, I have a size four tonight. Um, usually six and under is what I stick with for if I'm gonna do detail work. Usually actually I have one that's a three. That's usually my most popular one, but for some reason tonight I grabbed the four. So we will work with that. And then our colors. Um, I always say colors are, you can use any colors you want. If you don't have these colors or something close, that is completely fine. So don't get hung up on these colors, but we are gonna be using like a pine green or a dark green tonight. We got white. Some black here. I have like a light yellow. If you don't have something that's light, this one's called butter yellow. You can always add a little bit of white to your bright yellow and it will lighten it. Um, and some orange. Holiday red, any red will do. Sometimes I use Tuscan red too. So the, the hue isn't gonna matter too much. It's just some form of red. Um, I have a holiday green, just a little bit brighter. Navy blue. some brown and light blue. Like I said, if you don't have all these colors, that's no big deal. Um, you can always mix like your dark blue with white and make the light blue. You don't have to have separate colors. Same with orange, you can just mix your red and your yellow and you can get the same thing. So um, there's always a way to work around it. But um, I'll give it one more second and then I'm gonna start here. So where are we at? About 10 after eight? Okay, so I think it's good. If you guys are ready to start, give me some thumbs up. Let me know that everybody's ready. Pam, if you have a lighter blue and you just add, you can add a little bit of, um, just a tiny bit of black, it'll make it, it'll still keep the blue hue, but it'll be a darker uh, blue. So you can always add a little bit of black to your blue. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of thumbs up, so I think we're ready to start. So what we're gonna start with tonight is we are gonna put light blue on our plate first. And some navy blue. Yeah, Nadine, you can use that kind of blue too. You can use really anything you have. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. Any hue will be fine. Really, in reality, I'm just mixing these two blues to do this background color. So if your black, black can't talk tonight. <laughs> if your background blue is um, any other shade than this, it's still gonna be pretty and it's still gonna work. So don't get hung up on those two colors being mixed. Um, I'm just gonna take here And I'm just gonna, I only have those two colors on so far. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this navy here and just kind of move it over a bit with this blue. And we're just trying to get a lighter blue. So 
So we're just mixing that light blue with the navy. I, mean, I should just put it on top of each other. And then we're just gonna get somewhere in between these two colors. It's gonna make it almost a little bit smoky looking if you have the same exact colors that I have here. And I'm just using my little brush just to mix this right now. That way we don't waste a whole bunch with the big brush. So it's gonna be kind of like that, kind of like a middle blue there in between the two. A little bit smoky and you can go wash that little brush off. The, I was just using the little flathead brush just to mix it, but you, well, that's not what we're using right now. I just wanted to mix it with that, that way it didn't waste a whole bunch of paint because the bigger the bristles, the more paint it holds. So I didn't want to waste all the paint. Okay, and we're gonna start with our larger flathead brush here. So what we're gonna do is, really we only wanna cover from the top to about, I'd say, leave a, a quarter of the page because you're not gonna see anything past these hills anyways. So we don't have to paint um, past really this point here and we're just gonna grab a big scoop of paint just like this you don't have to be shy with it there and we're gonna go in circular motions to put this color on so I'm gonna put this a bit closer and I'm just gonna be going in circular motion like this to put this color on here I'm not going straight because I want the background to look a little bit foggy a little bit like there's some texture back there um, within the clouds. Once we put those clouds on top, then it's gonna, the background's gonna suit this. So I'm just doing light little swirls. I'm not going heavy handed at all. And this is just that light blue mixed with um, the navy blue and the, the big flathead brush here. And I'm just doing little circles all over just to cover it. And if you get, like, you'll get an accumulation, you can go back over that spot and just kind of collect it and then keep going. Because you don't want it to be super thick. You just want to be able to see that there is texture there. As opposed to when we're doing just back and forth and it's all straight. So you can kind of see here already that there's some texture in there. It kind of looks a little bit cloudy already or like the wind is stirring up the clouds and there's not even clouds yet <laughs> so this is just my three quarter inch flat brush um i think in the description i put half inch flat brush and that is perfectly fine I've been using this one because I think my daughter stole my other one and I can't find it, so. Anything around this size is good. And we're just gonna keep going in circles, grabbing more paint as we need it. And it's okay if your paint overlaps a little bit and then you get a little bit of a darker tone mixed in with a little bit of that white underneath. That's perfectly fine, that's giving it dimension. And that's what we're kind of going for here. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom. I'm just uh, leaving a little bit, a little bit down here, you'll see. I'm not gonna really cover that. We're gonna be going over it anyways with those hills. to about there is good and then you can wash off that big brush when you're done
And you can already see it kind of looks like rolling, like a rolling sky behind. It's pretty. And that is because you're having thicker pieces of, thicker sections of paint when you overlap, when you, when you make it into a circle, you kind of overlap. And so that's giving you thicker sections of paint. But then where you didn't overlap, you have almost like you can see the white canvas through or the white paper through. And that's what we want because it's kind of making it look like you already have two to three different tones in here and you don't, it's only one tone. So this is, um, I see a lot of people asking about my paper. This is a multimedia paper that I use. Um, this is the Canson, which I've never used another kind yet. This is my first one I've ever tried and I love it. Um, I get this on Amazon. So you can get it at Walmart. I think you can get it at Michael's too. This is an 11 by 14. It's multimedia paper. So when you paint, you can see here, I have lots of paintings and they don't go through. So you'll see on the back here, nothing goes through that. Um, even if you have like a really bright one or dark one here, for example, is my snowman. I painted black on the background and you can see through there is no, um, no black through. So that's why I really love this, this notepad. The only time I find it goes through is if I paint too close to the side and then I kind of skim the other pages, but it doesn't actually go through. And I think these, I'm in Canada, but these run about, um, about 16, $17 for 60 sheets. So I think it's a pretty good deal. So we'll just give that a second, give everybody a second here. give everybody a second to catch up there um so the brushes for this specific one is i see someone asking that i have all different brands here but um this one here is a three quarter inch they call it an oval wash but it's kind of like a big round head and then um just any detailed brush um size this is a size four so size six or down would be good then a small flat head brush here like that and then a bigger one like that. So this is um, a three quarter inch flathead. So anything smaller than that, just you can see the size difference there. And that will complete this painting. As for brands, um, this one here is Crafter's Choice and this is one of my favorites. The bristles don't fall out. They've, they're soft enough, but yet firm to paint good. Um, and they're like, a, they're a little, they're a pretty good price. Like they're not too expensive, but you can easily go to the Dollarama and get, I've painted with Dollarama brushes. As long as your bristles don't fall out and they're not too coarse, then you'll be fine. Uh, Myra, yes, I still have to go find out about the postage. We are in lockdown here, so it's not as easy to get out right now. Um, to find out. I don't know if I could call them if they would know exactly what I'm talking about. I think I'd have to actually go there and they'd have to weigh it. Um, but we are just in lockdown right now. So I'm just seeing how that goes. Kind of not going too many places. Our area is filling up with a lot of cases of COVID right now. Our schools are closed down and everything. So um, I, I will find it out. If she wants it before Christmas, um, just send me a message and let me know if she wants it before Christmas. And then I will... I'm gonna go uptown uh, in a couple days and I'll go find out. Okay, so what we're gonna do, um, just give me some thumbs up if everyone's got their background ready. And we'll work on our clouds. The cardinal painting night is tonight. We're doing that's what we're painting right now, Sherry. But there's gonna be a replay, so if you can't make it right now, there will be a replay up for you. Okay, I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. I'll just give it another minute and then we'll go on and we'll do the clouds. So if you want to get 
some white on your plate ready. We can do that. And we're just going to be getting this big brush ready. If you don't have a big brush like this, you can use um, you can use the same one here that I was using for the background. Uh, your clouds will look a little bit different, but you can still use it. Um, or you can use just a, a regular round head brush as well. The replay will be up under videos on my page as soon as this live is done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take um, this big fluffy brush here and we're, we have our white paint there, you can see. Um, and I'm just going to take and just put the end in just a bit so you can see it there like that. But then I'm just going to kind of brush it around like this. That way all the bristles kind of get um, some paint. Where am I here? <laughs> Trying to get the angle right. Just kind of brush it around on the plate like this. Just so we kind of get all our bristles. Because with these kind of brushes the bristles are different sizes. So, and what we want is, we want it to be just a light amount. We don't want it to be too crazy on there. And we're just gonna go, we're just gonna go and just do tiny little circles where we would want our clouds. So we're just gonna start very light handed, just doing little circles like this. And we can go really wherever we want our clouds to be. There's no right or wrong. They don't have to be exactly like mine. Um, these two paintings, the clouds will not be exactly the same. So I'm just go in circles here around very, very light, very small amount of paint. If you have too much paint, then you're going to start to see um, just like a big blob kind of mixing around. And we want to be able to see through these clouds. So we're just giving it this little tiny twirls with very light paint, just like that. So you can, you kind of want to be able to see in behind. Mm -hmm. If anybody has any questions and I'm not seeing them, you can always private message me and I will answer you afterwards. That's no problem. Either tonight or tomorrow. It'll be almost 10.30 by the time we're done probably here. So it might be tomorrow that I answer you. But I promise I will get back to you if you private message me. So I'm just loading back up on my brush again. And every time I load up, I'm just wiping the excess off on my plate. Just kind of doing what I would do on the canvas. But I'm doing it on my plate. I'm kind of getting my brush ready. Like it's already been used a little bit. I don't want it to be fresh right on there. And I'm just going to continue just kind of bringing... Little swirls in here and there. And my bristles are hardly touching. They're just lightly rubbing on the canvas here. Nothing too crazy. And I'm just going back over where I painted. Sometimes I go over it so much it's already dry by the time I'm done doing this. Just to kind of get it to look like it's not laying on top. It's kind of blending in. I'm just going in the same direction, around and around. So much that if I went to a new spot, you'll see I don't have any paint left on my brush. So that's what we want. We want to go until we don't have any paint left. It's kind of like buffering it out or like waxing a car. <laughs> Just keep going. 
And then I'm going to go back in again. And I'm just going to bring a little bit down here. And if there's any spots you feel like they got a little bit too dark, you can always go, when you're done doing this part, you can always go back in to that original mix here. Just don't rinse this brush out. Don't rinse the brush out until you're completely done using it. This sort of brush holds a ton of water, so it's gonna be hard to get this effect again once you wash the brush. So if I'm happy with the amount of clouds I have here, which I think that's pretty good. Um, and I, I think maybe like around here is a bit too dark. Then I can just go back in to that original blue and do the same thing. So kind of just brush it around. And then I can just kind of go over like this. And you'll see it kind of softens, softens out those clouds a little bit if you, if you went a little too heavy on the white. kind of just going back over a little bit and it kind of just makes the clouds look a little less out there you can just work with those kind of back and forth as long as you're just using a little bit of paint at a time um then it will be good I'm just lightening these up just a little bit. I felt they were a bit darker than my one below. So just kind of lightening them a little bit by going over. So when you're done, you can wash out this brush. We're not gonna use it again, but make sure that you're happy with the way your clouds look and your background looks before you um, wash this out or <laughs> this will suck up like a whole bathtub of water. So. <laughs> Uh, your, your cup will be empty. So I'm just washing out that big brush and uh, giving it a good dry and then just setting it aside. So, so far we just painted the background and then we just came in and we did some fluffy clouds and then I just brought back in some of that background color, just kind of swirled it in there and you can see we have a nice little swirly sky. It looks heavenly. I'll give everybody a minute to do that. If you go on my page, if you go right on my Artistic Chris page, um, there should be a button that says message and you can message me that way. Um, it should be up there. And so what we will do next is we are gonna work on, on these hills next. 
So if your canvas is at all wet, I would suggest just blow drying it um, just because we're not really blending these. We want these hills to lay over top. So mine's pretty dry, so I'm not gonna worry about blow drying it, but if yours is, if you had um, a lot of a thicker layer going on and it's still wet, I would give it a quick blow dry before we continue on. And just, when you're finishing up, just let me see those thumbs up and I'll know that it's good to continue on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put um, some more white on my plate just because I didn't have enough here, just because we're gonna do the hills. So if you need more white, you can go ahead and do that. This is with acrylics. This, is, this isn't watercolor, this is acrylics. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. So I'm gonna continue on. Um, now we have to decide where we want our hills. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're just gonna place out our three hills. So I have my big flathead brush here. Um, I'm gonna be using it on a 90 degree angle. So only that skinny side is gonna be um, doing anything right now. I'm not gonna have it flat like this. And I'm just gonna take and just dunk the end in some paint so just a quick dunk and then just tap it off and we're just gonna have a little bit all the way around and we're just gonna do the outline of our hills these don't have to be perfect you can start smaller and then you can always make them bigger and we're just gonna place them out so I am gonna go about here I guess I don't know if that's a little bit higher maybe but we'll go about here I guess and then just go up and then down just like that. And then I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. And just kind of come up and down. This is just giving us our outline right now of where these hills are gonna be. This brush here, that's called an oval. I have an oval wash, it's called. It's a three quarter inch. So I'm just outlining these two hills here. And then we can bring in that middle one. Just kind of up like this and around. We're just outlining that there. And then we can just come in and fill these in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill these in white. And when you're done, or when I'm done, I will give everyone time to catch up. So now I'm just using that big brush, um, the big flat way. That way it fills in quicker. We're just filling this in. Don't worry if you can see the kind of line where you didn't finish putting um, the blue. We're gonna do a couple coats, so it's not gonna show the whole time. We'll just get one coat on there to start. And what I like 
like to do is I'm going to do the two outside ones first. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the inside one, just so you can still differentiate where it's at. If you don't have an oval, oval brush for the clouds, you can use a round headed brush and that will do something similar. It'll be a little bit different, but um, if you use a big round, round head brush, it will give you nice clouds as well. So I'm just going to come in here and fill this one in, but I'm just going to leave, um, I'm just going to leave these sides here. So. I'm gonna come down like this and just leave a tiny small line in between here. We're gonna put some shading in anyways, and that way we can just tell where our hills are separated at. So all I've done so far is I've just drawn these through or painted these three hills and I'm just coloring them in. So we're just taking the white and we're just painting right now, just painting them in. And I'm following, I'm trying to stay with the shape of each hill. So because it's rounded at the top here, I'm going to go kind of back and forth rounded just to kind of keep the shape of that hill. So you'll see so far, you can see through the hills and that's fine. That's just the first coat. And I'll give everybody a chance to catch up. can hear the snow plows going by it must be snowing out I painted this one night. Um, I think it was when it was kind of in between my, my grandfather had passed away and then my husband's grandma passed away. And it was like the next day after she passed away, um, there was like two Cardinals just kind of dancing in the tree above. So I thought, Oh, it's probably them saying hi. <laughs> and I told my husband about it, but I know Cardinals always usually signify like someone saying hi from, from after they've passed away so I thought it'd be a nice painting just to kind of you know celebrate the people in our lives that we don't get to really celebrate Christmas with anymore so that's why I painted it I think I was in that mood at that time and this is kind of what came out of it so although I've never had a cardinal personally for me um, show up I always signify um, my dad had passed away and I always signify that with moths because whenever I feel down or I, I'm not sure about something, there's always like a moth in the corner of the room. So that's why I got this tattoo here for my dad. And that's just always what signifies for me. But I know a lot of people, the Cardinals is what a good signify is, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, Mary, a lot of people say that. They see the cardinals when somebody passes away. Um, and yeah, it's, it just makes you feel good, you know, just to see that. So, you know, it's their way of saying hi, and it makes us feel good. <laughs> well, that's nice, Nadine. This would make a lovely gift, a lovely gift for anybody who signifies um, cardinals with that. <laughs> Yeah, the one for, well, my mom's still alive, but yeah, me and my mom got a tattoo together. Um, her says daughter, mine says mom, so that was my first tattoo I ever got, but yeah, we got that together, but she's still, she is still alive, thank goodness. <laughs> I lost my dad pretty young, so I gotta keep one parent. <laughs> I said, mom, you gotta live to be 120 now just to make up for it. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Oh no, Timothy, your dad passed away today? I'm so sorry to hear about that. That's that's so hard. I'm really sorry. My thoughts will be with you and your mom. Okay, so as you guys are finishing up, just let me know um, and I'll move on to the next step. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some beige on my plate. Um, so I just have some beige here just for their faces. If you don't have a beige color, you can always take and mix um, a little bit of white with the brown here. Mix the white and the brown. And then you can add in a tiny bit of orange here and a little bit of pink and you will get the same tone as this here. And then if you want it a little bit darker, you can add more brown. If you want it a little bit lighter, you can add more white. But I already have it pre-mixed here, so I'm just gonna use this for now. So we're just putting a little bit of that on our plates. And then we're just gonna come in with our small detail brush. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna make the little round circle faces for our three angels here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on this on my brush here. Um, Lillian, you'll have to wait till this video is done to go back. Um, on the replay, you can fast forward and rewind, but. Right now, I don't think it'll let you go back while it's live, um, but it'll be replayed immediately after. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up a little bit. So we're gonna give 
you know, enough space for her dress to be um, on each side. So we just want to go um, just a little bit up. These are not big angels. And so the first one I'm going to do just in the middle here, and I'm just going to put a little, a little face. So kind of like a little oval. And I'm going to move out of the way and I'm going to move this closer for you to see. So our first one is just going to be just up a little bit. I say a couple inches, maybe two and a half inches up. And then we're going to do the same thing on both sides here. So this one's going to be naturally higher because this hill is higher than the side ones. But we're going to come up with the same. So right in the center of the hill and about two and a half inches, I'd say. And we're just going to do a little oval. And we're going to do the full oval. Her hair is going to cover it anyways, but we're going to do another one there. And then we're going to bring another one over here. And really, you can work with this. If, if yours are a little higher, her dress can be longer. And if it's shorter, if yours is shorter, then her dress can be shorter. So. I think my kids are having fun in the bedroom. I can hear them laughing. just have our three little faces here so far just three little ovals And what we're going to do after we've got our ovals on there, we are going to grab our small flathead brush. So you can um, clean the that detail brush off for now. It will get used again, but we're going to set it aside for a minute. And we're just going to do the dresses. So if you have, I was asked, um, I got sent a message asking, how would you do boy angels? Um, if you're going to do boy angels for their outfits they can still be wearing the long gown i just wouldn't flare the edges out so much so if you are doing boy angels i would just take take your flathead brush we're just going to put a little bit of paint on it there and we're just going to come down so from the neck here i would just kind of make straight more of a straight like that instead of going out but because we're doing girls right now, um, we're going to take and kind of just flare this out. So just kind of brush down like this, flaring out. And you don't want to have a ton of paint. You want the paint to not be um, on the edges. You want the paint to be kind of see-through here and kind of tattered. You don't want it to be like a straight edge. If you have too much paint, you're just gonna come to the shape of your brush. So you don't want that. So we're just gonna start with a thin layer, just like that. And all I did was, I just on a 90 degree angle, I just brushed down. I just kept brushing down along, kind of making a triangle. And I'm just gonna bring this one out a bit more. So we can just kind of play with this here and bring our angel dresses out as far as we want them. And then same with these other two. So just, I'm starting at the neck here and I'm just, coming out so out 
and then I'm just gonna brush it down. And you can reload with more paint if you need to. But my starting point is always from that center part of the neck and then out. Just like that. I'm just taking just sideways, my brush is sideways like this. You'll see here, if I can do that just sideways like that. And I'm just brushing straight down and then coming out a little bit on the edges just to achieve that. And then we're gonna do that again on this side as well. So just from the center point and then just kind of coming out. So I'll have three little triangles here with little heads on top. <laughs> they look silly right now, but it will all come together. Yeah, this is all with white. This is all white so far. We can just come back in if your dresses are dry. Just come back in and just kind of give just a light second coat so that it looks like the dress is, um, like there's more substance to the dress up top and as it falls, it becomes more see-through. So just a little bit of a second coat. You don't have to go all the way down to the bottom of this. We're kind of leaving this more where you can see the sky in behind. So I'm just basically going over what I did. I'm just not going as low again. I'm just leaving the very bottom open. So you'll see now bringing in a second coat of the white. It's just a lot less see-through here. And then at the bottom, it kind of, you know, it makes them look, they're angels. So you want them to be kind of see-through. You don't want them to be um, completely solid. Um, yeah, there's going to be a replay as soon as, as soon as I am done this. So you can go on under videos on my page and you can see it there. Um, if you're blessed, sorry, if your dress blends with the clouds, we're going to be coming through with some dark gray and black after. So you can always outline and bring it out that way. So don't worry if your dress is blending in with the clouds too much. Um, We're, always, we're gonna be bringing in some different colors in here. So right now it's just, um, it's just the white, but you will be able to see it better.
So now what we're gonna do is, once we've got our dresses there, we're just gonna add um, the arms in here. So you can see here on this one, we just have a little bit of white coming out. So we're gonna go ahead and add some arms. And by doing that, we're just gonna start right at the neck here and just bring, just bring it out. So I'm just gonna bring it out like that. I'm still using just the flathead brush. If you find it easier to use a detailed brush, you could do that too. But I'm gonna do that on both sides. I'm just bringing that arm in there. And then for this one here, for the one in the front, I'm just gonna make a little loop. So it's just gonna come, it might actually be easier to do this one with the detail brush. But I'm just gonna come in here and just make from the neck up here, just a little loop around like this. So one like that, and then one like this on this side here. And we're gonna be outlining this, so if nothing is showing as much, it's going to show more. So just kind of like that there. Almost looks like a pretzel at the top. <laughs> and we have that one coming out there, and that one coming out there. Yes, I will be posting this on YouTube um, within a couple days, just under Artisticress, just like, um, just like on my Facebook page. So it's spelled the same way under Artisticress. You can catch all my past free tutorials on there. They're all up. Um, this is the only one that isn't up yet. Okay, so while we have our white out, um, and I still have my small flathead brush here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the wings. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna outline the edge of the wings first, because that's what we want to be the darkest. After inside here, it's okay if they are a bit see-through because they're angel wings. So um, we're just gonna start with an outline. And what I do is for this one here, I'm just gonna come up and down like that. So you'll see that shape there. So just up almost like half a heart, but then instead of going in, I'm just kind of flicking it out. And I'm just gonna take from that edge there, I'm just gonna pull down lightly. So I'm just pulling down Just lightly pulling down here. And you'll see 
that that will make almost a see-through wing here. So we want it to stay, we want this to be the darkest part and then we're just pulling down from that dark part and kind of just swooping it out. <clears throat> and we are gonna do that for all of these wings here. So the middle one, we'll do half a heart on this side. I'm just gonna come up like that and just kind of go back out. And same with on this side here, up and just out. And then I'm just pulling down from that excess paint that I have around the edge. And I'm just leaving a little bit of space in between her so we can see the wing there. And same with this one, just pulling down. And then same with this one over here. So half a heart and then just flick out at the end instead of going in. So flicking out and then just bringing it down from that edge. So we will have all the wings here. I'll give everyone a couple minutes to do that. And you can wash that brush when you're done. How's everyone enjoying this painting so far? Are you having fun? Are you enjoying this one? This is, I think this is more of a fun one to paint. Um, I always like the freehand ones and then it's just got a lot of attributes to it. So, you know, a lot of different ways to paint is in this, is in this particular painting and there's lots of color and I just like this one. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, if I was going to recommend any brushes, I would say I really, really like the Crafter's Choice brushes. Um, these you can get, I believe these are at Michael's and I got the, I got these specific ones though on Amazon, but if you want to get them at an actual store, I believe they're at Michael's. Um, these ones are, they're not too pricey. Um, they're more expensive obviously than the lowest, um, your lowest choice, but they're not as expensive as they could be either. So it's a good mid price for the quality. But I have, when I was starting out, I painted with this set from the Dollarama and it was $4 for a few brushes and they, I still have some of them and they work amazing too. So there's not really a name brand on those ones and there's not even sizes, I don't think, but they come in like this little round tube and I think they still have them. Um, you get like five or six for, uh, $4 and they, I love those brushes. They've always been one of my favorites actually. But if you're going to go with an actual name brand, then I like the crafter's choice. Okay, so what we're gonna do is 
Um, I'm gonna get out the colors that we I used here to paint the angel's hair. Um, you can really go with any color you want. So for me, that was um, the butter yellow. But if you have somebody in mind and you wanna match their hair color, you can definitely do that. And then I have brown that I'm gonna put on my plate. Some orange. And some black. So I have a variety of colors going on here. And this is really just going to give it a little bit of dimension as we're doing it rather than having one solid color. Um, and we are going to go here with our small detail brush. So what I'm gonna do is this one, this angel here, she has brown hair. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna give her just kind of a start to what where her hairline's gonna be. So as you can see here, it kind of swoops down, out and down. So I'm just gonna give her where it's gonna come on her forehead like that and then just come down just so I know what I'm working with here. We don't wanna cover her face if we just start doing the hair. So as you see there, I just kind of gave a base of where I wanna stay, what I wanna stay in. So I don't really wanna go in here, so I just made this line, and then I know to stay from there back. Now if you're doing boys, um, you can just stick with this hairline here and just keep it short hair. Um, same with here, give it just like a little bang and just keep the hair short. But what I did for these ones is I made wavy hair. So after we know where we're starting from, we can take our point of brush and we can kind of just do waves all the way down. So just kind of put your brush down and just do waves until this is all filled in. And it's gonna show more once we put a different color on top. But for now, we'll just start with this brown or whatever color you have. And you can go right over the wing, kind of where the wing separates from the shirt. You can kind of put the hair in there. And so we'll just have that so far like that. And if you want to do some more of like a straight hair, then you could do that too. You don't have to make it wavy. You could just go straight down. Um, this one over here, I'm going to do the same thing. So it's going to start brown. I'm just going to make her hairline here. And I'm just going to go more straight. You'll see that one there. So that one's more straight. And then that one is wavy. And then I'm gonna wash my brush off just cause I'm gonna switch hair colors for the middle girl. I'm gonna start with um, the yellow for hers. And I'm just gonna create that hairline. So. I'm just gonna give her a bang this way and down and then this way here. So kind of like a part and I'm gonna make her hair wavy too. So I'm just starting with this. You're not gonna see it a ton until we put the other colors in, but I'll move it closer in one second so you can see. You'll see that there. I just have her, her bangs coming across. 
and then just kind of wavy on the sides. So once you have your base colors down, this is when you can bring other colors in. So I'm going to start with the one that I started with um, on the side. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of black into her hair just to give it a little bit of dimension. So you can even do that by even outlining a bit of where it starts again. So even kind of just bringing a wave in across here and then down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the one in the middle with some brown and some orange. So I'm just going to bring in some waves here. And these secondary colors I'm not going to do as much as I did the original color. And then I'm just going to go in with orange as well and kind of just bring in a third option here for the girl in the middle. And same for this one, just bring a little bit of straight highlights in. We have all three of those there with their hair. Okay, so as we're finishing up that, um, what we can do next is we're just gonna take and just put their hands in. So we want them to look kind of like they're holding their hands out like this and then the cardinals are gonna be sitting inside their hands. So from a side point of view, you can see my hand, it kind of just comes out and then we're just gonna arch it up a bit. So this, these are for the ones that where we are looking from the profile. So I'm just grabbing my detail brush with a little bit of that um, beige. And I'm just going to bring just this out a little bit here and then just kind of up. 
So you'll see there, just from where the sleeve is, a little bit out and just arched a little bit up, just like she's cupping her hands. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So for this one here, just out a little bit and this kind of up. And then the middle one, you're not going to see your hands too much because the cardinal is going to be like a rate kind of sitting out on them. But you can just give her just a little bit, two little round hands here. And then her skin color will show a little bit around the cardinal when we're done. But they can just be like little round balls because you're not going to really see them too much anyways. Um, yeah, yes, I'm gonna add glitter at the end. I don't think I put that in the supply list, but you can always grab some glitter or I'm gonna put glitter on their wings at the end. But you can definitely use glitter. So what I'm going to do, just let me know in the comments if I happen to be going too fast. I'm going to go on to the next step. Um, and this is going to be just, we're going to work on these hills a little bit more before we start putting this greenery in front. So we're going to take and mix. We want to mix a light gray. So I'm just going to pull some of this white to the side here. We don't need a ton because this is just going to be the accents. And then we're just going to grab a little tip of black and I'm just going to mix it in on the side here. We're just gonna have uh, a light to medium gray. And I always do all my mixing with my small flathead brush. Um, we're not actually sticking with this brush. I just, like I said before, I don't like to waste the paint. If I use the big brush that I wanna use for this, it's gonna suck up all my paint. So I just have a, a light to medium gray there. And then I'm gonna go and wash that little brush off. And then what we're going to start to do now is we're going to start to add a little bit of um, a little bit of shadowing into our hills here. So we should have on our plates that gray we mixed and then some excess white left over. So if you don't have that, just get a little bit more white on your plate. And we're going to use our big flathead brush here. And what we want to do is we're just going to grab some with one side of the brush. This side doesn't really have any just the one side and we're going to take this line here and this line and we're just going to pull in some gray this way. So we're just going to put it down right on there and just pull up with gray and just kind of bring that gray out and it doesn't have to go all the way because we're going to come back with white, but we're just bringing some gray in there and same with the other side. So I'm just putting it my flat brush right against that, edge and I'm just pulling from the sides just out. So just pulling all the way along that edge just to make it look a little bit darker. And then once we have the gray on that edge, then we can go in with the white again. I'll show you in one second. So I'm still just pulling some gray in here. Just up the sides. 
And then I'm gonna go in with a scoop of white. I'm not washing my brush off at all. So that's right over top of the gray. And I'm just going to start going back and forth again over these hills here. So this one here, I'm just gonna go back and forth in that shape. And as I come through the middle, I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge. I'm gonna leave a little bit of that gray showing on the sides and just down the center here. So we're just pulling that gray or that white over top of that gray a bit. Same with this side here. But I'm leaving just a little bit on the sides so you can see there is a shadow kind of in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the ones on the side. So I'm, I'm not washing my brush. I'm gonna grab that gray and I'm gonna go right on this edge here, just kind of down here, but where it follows down and just kind of pull out a little bit with that gray, just along that edge. Just along the edge coming up and then going right in with that white and just starting to paint that hill again. So going side down the side here, back and forth. And you can go a little over top of that gray and kind of pull it. And it's gonna keep this edge a bit darker. So you'll see here some shadows starting to come in. And then back with the gray again, same thing on this side, kind of pulling from where that hill goes in front. Just out on the side with the gray. And the gray is very light. It's not really taking over. It's just kind of giving the look of that, those shadows there. And then right back into the white and then just continuing this hill now. So I'm brushing from the opposite side that I did the gray on through to the gray and then I can kind of go back and forth lightly just to kind of bring that white and gray together but I'm very light-handed here I'm not nothing's like nothing's pushing down too hard if you push down too hard you're just going to take the undercoat of paint off so we just want to go very light Kind of soften that edge there. And I'll just show you kind of like an example of what I mean. So if I'm pushing down hard on my brush, you're gonna see that stroke there, or you're gonna get like indents like that. So just very light handed, back and forth. When we go light-handed, we fill in the spaces. The paint knows to fill in the spaces that um, are not filled already. When we go, when we push down hard, we're choosing where it's going. But if we just go light-handed, it's falling into its place on its own. If that makes sense. And when you're done that, you can wash out that big brush. I'll give you a minute here to catch up. Just let me know in the comments if you are keeping up okay. I never want you to feel rushed during one of my paint nights. I designate the time for you to spend with you. So um, I never want you to feel like you're being rushed. I like my paint nights to be relaxing, enjoyable a little educational, <laughs> not too much, <laughs> not too much education, just a little bit. I'm gonna sit back and sip my tea for a minute. <sighs> Be thankful that tomorrow is the last day of homeschooling for two weeks. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> I can breathe.
I'm starting to see a couple hearts, but I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes because I gave these guys quite a few steps there. So I'll let you catch up. Thank you, June. I appreciate that. Um, because I'm a self-taught, I taught myself to do this just over the years. Um, I feel it's so important to tell people every step because especially if you're newer to painting, you don't know the reasons why certain things achieve certain looks, right? Or why certain techniques with brushes work. So as I was learning, I learned why and how. And so I feel it's very important um, to be able to show you exactly why the shadowing matters or why we do the clouds this way. So I'm glad that it's coming across clear and that you are learning something. Um, thank you, it makes me feel good. I find the time in my passion. <laughs> I I could just be watching TV or sitting down, but I truly love painting and I truly love sharing it with everybody. Um, it took me almost 38 years really to decide what I wanted to do and what I liked doing. And I figured since work is, is more than half of our life, we should enjoy what we're doing. So um, this speaks to my soul and I love just seeing everybody here painting. So I, I find the time because it's time that I enjoy. Um, yeah, well, the blue's showing through the hills a little bit still. Not a crazy amount, but if you have a thinner paint, you might need to do another coat. Um, but I, I can still see the blue a little bit, but that's kind of giving it a little bit of dimension. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do another coat, but if you feel like it's too much, you could do another coat. So I'm just, what we're gonna do next is we are gonna um, paint our cardinals next, just the first layer of our cardinals. So I'm gonna get my red on my plate. And you're gonna wanna use your small brush for this, so that pointed detail brush. Um, the main point here for the birds is just to not make them appear too big because they have to be too um, to size. So really just starting small and then working bigger for each step of this is what's going to make you achieve that. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to break down the steps for what these birds look like. So we're just going to get a little bit of paint 
on our detail brush there and I'm just doing the very tip of it because I don't want a ton of paint I don't want to accidentally have the paint that's down here land on the canvas because the, this is a more of a delicate part of the painting and for starting with this girl right here we're just going to draw a very small oval just in the palm of her hand so I'm painting on here just and I will show you closer once I do it here I just want to make sure I'm at the right angle so it looks right so just a small little oval just sitting in her hand there and we're gonna do the same thing with the other girl that is um, uh, like a profile view. So over here is the same size little oval, little red oval. And don't be too critical about these birds. This is not obviously a realistic painting. This is more of a cartoony fun painting. Um, I'm not a fine artist uh, by no means. So don't get too hung up on exact shapes and and where the colors are going. Um, you can see obviously that my birds are more of a cartoonish style here. So we've got our two little ovals here and we're gonna put another little oval right here on top of this girl's hands. You'll be able to see the side of her hands but you're gonna be covering the center section there. So right now we just have three little ovals in their hands. And then I have one flying right here. It's optional, you don't have to, or you can put it somewhere else. Um, so what I'm gonna do up here in the corner here is I'm gonna do another oval. I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit bigger. This oval is gonna be tilted a little bit uh, to the right. So it's not gonna be completely straight up and down. It's just gonna be tilted a bit. So you'll see there, we just have a little oval floating in the sky doing nothing. <laughs> right now we don't know what it is. And he's like, a, uh, maybe like a 45 degree angle. This is all with the red right now. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another oval on top, but just this is, this is gonna be his head, so just super tiny. And this one's going to be just a little tiny oval just on top here. I'll show you there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're really just breaking this down into shapes. It's just easier to understand if it's shapes. And then same with this one in the center, just a little oval on top. And this one flying here is just gonna be a little oval, but it's not gonna be going in the same exact direction as this as the oval here it's going to be more upright just because he's flying and his head is up so we have that big oval at a 45 degree angle but this one's going to be up a bit more you'll see we just added to it just a little tiny smaller oval on top Yeah, I can hold the finished picture up again. So 
right now if you look at these guys you can see kind of like if you make this out here we've got the little the bigger oval here we've gotten a small oval so far right here so that's all we've worked on right now on each one the bigger oval and then the smaller one don't worry about this point here on his head that's going to come later and then same with us this one here the bigger oval and just the small little oval right there Okay. So now we're going to take and we're just going to do his, their little tails. So if we look at this one here, we're going to go underneath our hands and we're just going to, we're still with a, working with a small detail brush. We're just going to put like maybe four or five little flicks like that of the brush. So we want them to be uneven. It looks like the little tail coming down here underneath. And we're going to do that for all of them. So and then same with this one over here. And this one flying in the sky is going to be a little bit different um, because he's sideways and he's kind of sprawling out a bit. We're going to take and extend this back oval a bit. So we're going to um, just kind of come down here and flick out just like that. Kind of flick it out and just kind of bring it in a bit up here. So this is going to be extended down. Kind of like that. That's going to be his tail there. And we're going to be adding some black in here and stuff. So it's going to pop out a bit more once we do that. But we want the longest part of his tail to be following his back here. And then kind of coming up from that point this way. This one is free, a free paint night. So you can just find it under videos on my page. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, the replay is not, there's no charge for the replay. If you just go under videos on Artisticris, you can find it there.
Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna work on the little points on their heads. So for these side guys here, um, they are facing their angels. So we're just gonna bring out two little points here, very tiny. This guy's gonna be facing that way. I know it's very hard to see because it's tiny. That guy's gonna be facing that way there. And then the other one is going to be the other way. And then the guy in the middle is just gonna kind of be just in, in on top. So we can just put a couple little, couple little puffs on the top of his head here, sticking up. And then this guy who's flying separate here, he's just gonna come to a point. So I'm just going to bring this point back. Just like that. So I just put a little point here kind of facing back on the top of his head there. So the cardinals that are all, all three cardinals here, that's basically it for the red parts of their body. So there's nothing else we really have to add to that except for just the black, the black marks and then the, the beaks and the eyes. So if you have this shape complete, then your cardinals are good there. And then we just need to add a little bit more to this guy up here. So we're just gonna add the wings. Um, so for this one here on this side, he is just coming straight out to a point and back in. So just like that. So kind of like a little bit of a curved up triangle there. And then this one over here is gonna go out like that. It's gonna fly out this way. And it's just gonna, some of these are gonna go up. So we're just gonna have some kind of going up like this. And then the other ones we're gonna have kind of just flailing out as they start to go down. So like that. So his wing is open. So we're just, starting with a big stripe up, kind of continue a couple up, start going straight, and then kind of end going down. And as we go down, they're getting smaller because that's the tip of his wing there.
So right now we just have the basis of the birds. We don't have any any details on them. They're just there right now, just red. Um, and that's where we're at right now. And we're gonna leave those birds to let them dry um, as we go on to the next step and then we'll come back to them. So just give me a thumbs up when you're ready to move on. And then we're gonna work on this greenery down here. I like the paw prints. My dog's sleeping on the bed as usual. He's out like a light. <laughs> okay, I see tons of thumbs up. So we'll keep going here. So we're still gonna use our detail brush and what we're really working on is we're just gonna work on the center section of all of these for right now. So we're just gonna get these into place. Um, so if you don't have brown on your plate, you can put some brown on there. And really you can put these wherever you want. Um, they don't have to be the same exact way as mine. I'll show you where mine are placed, but you can fill in different gaps if you had your hills a little bit different. You can really use this just as a filler. So I'm gonna bring from the bottom up with this small detailed brush. I have brown on my brush here. Oh, I have a couple people asking me to wait. I'm just gonna wait one more second. So just put brown on your plate and then get your small brush ready and we'll get going in one minute. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just putting in our center sections of our greenery here. So I just have paint on this brush here, it's brown right now. And I'm just gonna come up, these two down here kind of come up in an arc in the center. So I'm just gonna bring from the bottom here, I have my finger against the, the canvas here. This is gonna hold um, me more steady and I'm just gonna kind of move my whole arm up as I go that way I'm not too shaky so I'm just gonna kind of bring this up here on an arch and I'm gonna do the same over here so I just have two coming up here they don't have to be even Then I'm going to bring another one from this corner here, just kind of straight up like this. And you can work with a couple branches off of this one. So like I said, you can place them really wherever. I'm just going to bring one off of here a little bit, going that way. And I'll hold this up closer when I'm done so you can see where they're placed. And then same with this one here. I'm just going to bring it kind of up like this. You can put some off of there. We'll put some berries on the ends. just wherever 
wherever you need space filled. So for me down here, this might be a little bit different than it was um, when I painted this one. So I might not need as many going this way. Kind of just fill in your space, make it your own. And then I'm gonna start on this side too down here and just kind of build one up this way. And then I'm just going to bring another one up here. And then just some off of here. I'm going to put the red berries off the ends of these. So wherever you want your red berries, just put some little, little sticks there. Mm, acrylic paint is very hard to get out of clothing. Um, I use spray and wash. Usually I'll just let it sit there for a couple days, but it's really hard to get acrylic paint out of clothing. That's why I usually, usually I'll have an apron on or just wear something I don't care if it gets paint on it. So right now I just have this going on. So you'll see just a couple little separations there and then just wherever we want our berries to be on the ends of these smaller points right here, all these ones. I heard also, I don't know if there's Avon in the States. Um, I don't know if people sell Avon all, Avon all over the world. I heard their bubble bath removes a lot of stuff too. I've never tried it, but if you put bubble bath on the spot, maybe that will work. Um, I've yet to try that, but I do have some here. I should try it out. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my holiday green on my plate and some of that dark that dark pine green. So two different shades. If you don't have two different shades, you can always take your, your green, you can add some yellow to it, some white, and that will make it look a little brighter. And I'm just gonna still be using that, that small detail brush. And we're gonna come in first and we're gonna do these um, bigger ones. So all I'm doing really for this is I'm just gonna load up my brush with um, that light, lighter green first, that holiday green. And I'm loading my brush up pretty good, the whole length of it. And then I'm just gonna take and just start at the bottom and just come out like that. So I'm putting a good amount of pressure on the brush. That way my leaves are a bit thicker and I'm just coming up like this and as I get closer to the top they're gonna get a little bit shorter I'm gonna do that on both sides so just pushing down and flicking out and it's okay if you're going over anything you've already done that's fine like if you're going over those brown sticks that's no problem So just starting at that middle part and just flicking out to so make sure you get smaller as you get closer to the top. And I'm gonna do that one with this one as well.
can bring these out a bit more. And you're just kind of filling in that space a little bit. So this is just my small detail brush I have here. If you have a lot of a smaller detail brush and you're finding it hard to get enough paint to make those, you can always use your small um, flathead brush here and do the same thing, but just use it on that edge. So like a 90 degree angle and come up and that will hold more paint for you too if that works better. But right now I'm using a size four and it's working fine. I'm just loading my brush up. And this is just the lightest green so far. So that's just, I have holiday green, so that's what I'm using. And then same with all the ones on the side, I'm just gonna bring a little bit of just some squiggly green um, leaves up here. It's not gonna be the same exact shape as these, just kind of a little bit of greenery around the base of that one there. And same with over here. So just kind of, kind of like a tall grass, just, I just put my brush and kind of just flick up and I'm still using the same green. So this is all just holiday green so far. And then same with up here, just a little bit more. So, so far all we've done is just use the holiday green on these ones here. We're just kind of going in a, a rounded up motion, bigger to smaller for the middle ones. And then just throwing a little bit of greenery down here and in the middle, just around here. There's gonna be berries. Um, so everything's gonna kind of fill in nicely. I have a rose scented candle going tonight. It smells really good. We got like this pack of 12 candles. I don't know how hot this is. Hopefully it doesn't burn me. <laughs> but they kind of, they look like this and they have like all these pretty jars. We got them on Amazon. Um, my husband's kind of loves scented candles. So <laughs> he's like, can you find me some good scented candles? So I, I didn't know if these were good, but 
I got like a pack of 12 of these and they have all like natural, um, supposed to be like therapeutic aromas. So this one's rose, but they smell really good. I, I like them a lot. Last time I painted, I did lavender, but um, yeah, the rose is smelling really nice. And I like it too, because you can keep the containers after. And then I think I'm gonna try to make my own candles. So my husband's super pumped to try to make candles with me. <laughs> so he's like, we have to get candle making kits. So I think we're gonna do that maybe on the Christmas break. Yeah, there's that one there. So that was the rose. And then here's the lavender container. So they all come in these cute little jar, like these little jars and they have the lids you can put on them. So they'd even be cute. Like if you, um, I don't know, I was thinking even like if you gave like a little gift away or something in there, that's, they're super cute. Yeah, yeah, my husband is super romantic. <laughs> He's definitely actually more romantic than I am, which <laughs> is funny, but he loves things like that. He loves making stuff like that. Actually, speaking of which, he asked if we could do um, a Valentine's paint night together. So he's super pumped. So in February, at some point, we're gonna be having a couple's paint night. I don't know what we're painting yet, but he's keeps reminding me, don't forget, don't forget. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the leaves we've already done and we're just gonna go with the darkest green. So we did the lighter green to start. We're gonna go into the darker green and we're just going, we're not gonna go right over them. We're gonna kind of go into them, but just maybe a little bit above or below. So we still wanna be able to see You'll see here, we still want to be able to see that green underneath, but we're just adding a little bit of thickness with that darker green. So we're just going to come through with that dark green on all of these. And just kind of thicken them up a bit, give them a little bit of dimension by making them a little bit darker on one side. It doesn't have to be too particular, just kind of following those lines there. So you'll see you're kind of just thickening them up a bit. And the same with down here, you can kind of just bring in, they don't have to follow right on top. You can even add a little extra of the dark for these ones here. And when you're done doing all your greenery, you can rinse out that small brush. We're still gonna use it, but 
We're just we're switching switching colors. Thank you, Penny. That's nice. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna do um, the little berries, and then if anybody, anyone needs more time, I'll give you more time before we go do the details on everything. So what we have left to do after we're done doing the berries here is we're really just gonna put the details on everything with our black, um, the beaks on the birds, uh, and then um, same with like the hills, and really just uh, a little bit of snow and some sparkles and we'll be done. So. Not too much left after the greenery. But I'm just going in with my small brush still and I'm only placing little round circles for the berries on the ends of every little line I made here. So just kind of going in a circle here and I'm just moving my fingers. I'm not moving my whole arm. Um, that helps keep it in a circular shape. If you move your whole arm, usually it'll turn out to be more like an oval. So I'm just taking and just drawing the berries that go on the ends. If you have any greenery that's super wet and you're doing your berries over top, I would just give it a quick blow dry just because it's going to mix together and it's going to give you a brown color. So it's not going to look too, too pretty there, but a quick blow dry before we do this, but mine's pretty dry already. And sometimes I find it easy too to make the circles. I'll do like two little C's. So a C this way, a C that way, then just fill it in rather than going right around in a circle. I'm just gonna do a couple more lower here. Are you waking up, huh? My dog has decided to wake up. <laughs> you might hear some noises. And you can always add, like I'm doing right now, like I just thought a little a couple more berries should be lower, so I'm just adding those brown sticks to connect them now. Just because I kind of, they were floating in there.
So yeah, I'll give everyone a couple of minutes here to catch up and then we'll do some detail work, some snowflakes, some sparkles, and we'll be done. We should be done by 10.30 if anyone's getting tired. 10.30 my time. <laughs> if you're anywhere else in the world, then it might be earlier for you. <laughs> you don't have to stay here and paint with me for two more hours, I promise. <laughs> So just start throwing some thumbs up when you are ready to move on to the detail work. So I'll just show you what I have coming up on Saturday. Um, if I can find it in my book here. Oh, you know what? It's not in my book here. That's why I'll run and get it super quick. So I have coming up this um, here. So this is a snowman snow globe challenge. Um, that's gonna be this Saturday. Uh, it's gonna be a contest. So what happens is this is uh, $10 to join um, and it's $10 per household. So if you have five family members at home that wanna paint with you, it's still just $10. Um, you can invite friends over. Um, and what it is is we're gonna paint this together, but I'm gonna leave the snow globe empty and what the challenge is, is everybody's gonna paint something that means something to them at Christmas inside the snow globe. Um, and then I'm gonna give away an Amazon gift card to the most creative. So this is not not gonna be based just on skill. Um, so don't worry about like how advanced of a painter you are. It's just gonna be based on creativity, the thought process behind it. So um, we'll be painting all this together. This will just stay empty and then you'll have an extra week to paint whatever you would like. I think it's December 30th is when the challenge ends. And then whoever wins gets an Amazon gift card. So I'm gonna put in the comments the link to this event if you wanna check it out. Um, but that is something that would be fun for everybody to do. Your kids can enter too. Um, it's family friendly, so. So I'm gonna put that in the comments. I'll just pin the link for you if you wanna check out the event. Okay, so it's up there, it'll say constant contact. That link is a legit link. So don't think anybody just threw up a scam again. Um, and plus it says Crystal Anger, so I posted it there. So you can just click on it, you can see, read all the details there um, and then see if anybody's interested in painting it with you. So just let me know, I think that we're pretty good to keep moving on now. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to get, if you don't have black on your plate yet, you can get some black out. And we're still using our little detailed brush here. So there should be black on your plate and there should be some gray still. If you don't have um, still some gray left over from the hills, just mix a little bit more black and white. Um, and what we're gonna do is come in and just put in some accents into our angels dresses. So. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that gray. And I'm just gonna do one little stroke down each side, just so we can kind of say where her dress ends. And then just a couple down the center, so nothing too crazy. I'm gonna move that closer so you can see. So just one down each side. And when I say down each side, some of the white can be on the outside of it. It doesn't have to be considered an outline. It's just a little bit more detail in there. And I'm gonna do that with all of them, with the gray. 
So kind of just bring one down to the front here, to the back, and then just throw a couple in. Same with down the arms a little bit. You can just throw a couple little gray ones down the, down the arms. And then this side too. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the black. So just the very tip of your brush with black. And then just lightly, very light angel. You don't want this to be too thick because the angel we want her to appear uh, light in color still with her white gown. So this is just very light handed, just kind of swooping down on the sides, a couple in the center, just to kind of show that her dress is flowing in a downward motion. And then I'm just going to add her arm in here with the black, just so we can see where her arm's coming from. So just a little, a little shoulder there. And then just down the side a bit. So you can see there, we can see where her arm is coming from. And I'm gonna do that for these ones as well. I'll hold this closer so you can see. So we're just kind of making a shoulder there with the black, just to show her arm is not just in, in the, in there somewhere, it's actually on the outside of her body. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our birds here. So what we're gonna do is just very subtle. So we just want the very tip of our brush to be in the paint. And we're gonna take, and this is gonna be, he's gonna be looking at her. So the side of the face is gonna be just a little line of black, just like that, coming down the front. So just, a tiny line like that of black, kind of outlining the front of the face. And then we're just gonna bring in a little wing there. And a couple little like lines just down in the tail. So that's gonna be that's gonna be it for the black on the ones that are facing the side. So just, just kind of leaving a little outline on the front of the bird in black, making a little wing there, just a little half oval there and a little bit into the tail. And we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side, but just the opposite way. So the same, the same way facing the angel
And then the front of this one here, we're gonna bring the black band across the eyes. Just across the eyes here. And make a little wing on the side here. And this one's gonna be turned just a little bit. Its body's gonna be turned. So we got the wing there. We'll just give a little bit of a black outline on that side. And then just down on the tail, just a little bit, a couple little flicks. Okay, and then for the one flying in the sky, we're just gonna bring his little face is gonna be black here. So a little bit of black there. And it's just gonna come down on the chest a bit. So just like that. And outline that wing. And I'm just going to bring an outline for the head as well. And then just some into the wings. So a little flick here and there just to kind of show which way the wings are going. And along the back side here, just a couple little flicks in there. And I'm just going to bring his little feet out. So just two little sticks here with just a couple little. Oh, I think I dropped some paint on my this here Is everyone okay with their birds? Let me know if anyone needs it held up closer again. So what we're going to do now is just do a very thin outline. We're not going to do a solid outline, kind of just hit and miss just over the hills here. So I'm just taking a light, light hand and just bringing that black just a little bit over the hills just to define them. I'll hold it closer here. I see a couple people saying closer. I 
Um, yes, Pat, it will be available as soon as we're done. It will be under videos on my page. And we're just going to still outline just the tops of these hills just lightly. Nothing too thick. And then same with the berries. I'm just gonna put this little half circles around them. So you'll see here, not full circles, just to kind of give them a highlight or a low light, I should say, a shadow. And this is really where we're adding all the extra characters. So just quickly around, they don't have to be perfect. I'm just going to add a little bit of black down the center of these branches here. Just a tiny bit just to make them pop out a bit more. You can still see the black underneath. I'm just putting just a tiny thin line. It's not even all the way solid through. Just giving it a little bit more character. You'll see it kind of just makes it pop out a bit when we have that black come in. While I have this same brush out, I'm just going to add a little bit of snowflakes. So just tiny little circles in the sky, not too much. And this is almost done. So if you're falling a little bit behind, as soon as I post this up, you can just go right to the end of the video and just finish up.
So I'll give everyone a second to catch up on that. And then we're just gonna do the, the beaks and the eyes and put a little bit of sparkles on the wings and we will be complete. Also, if you um, if you want to send in your picture after, um, I love posting everyone else's pictures that they've done. People love to see them. So you can do that right on my page underneath this video if you want. Or you can go to um, my group, uh, Created to Create with Artisticris, and you can post them there. Um, I'll put that clickable in the link so that you can... Uh, join that group if you want. It's a free group just where we share our art. And I think it has over 600 people now. So we just share our art and it's just a nice place. There's no judge free zone. So I just, I just uh, put it in the comments there. Created to create with Artistic Crest. So you can ask to join that group. You can put your artwork in there. It doesn't have to be just artwork that we did together. It can be if you've done it with other people or by yourself other artists that's no problem okay so we're just gonna take I'm gonna take some orange just on my small brush again here and just put the tiniest little triangle just where their beaks would be so the tiniest little I'll hold this closer when I'm done to show you So you'll see there, like so, so super tiny, just a tiny, tiny little triangle. And that goes for all of them. He's got his there. This one here, I just put facing down, the triangles in the center. And then there. And then same with just a tiny little white dot for the eyes. So the ones on the side are just going to have one little dot. The one in the front's going to have the two. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of sparkles. So I like the Stickles brand. This one's, um, it's a little bit more pricey, but the sparkles are really nice in it. And I'm just gonna put it on the angel's wings. That's all I did for my original one. So I'm just gonna take my small flathead brush here and I just put a little bit of those sparkles on my plate. And I'm just gonna go in there and just paint over those wings with the sparkles. You can put the sparkles wherever you'd like. They don't have to be just on the wings, but I thought it was pretty. Kind of accentuating their wings here. And then if I hold it closer, you'll be able to see maybe in the light. Try to get it to shine a bit. You'll see just their wings are shining. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> I can see it from my side, but I'm not sure. And then I'm just gonna put my initials at the bottom. So don't forget to sign your work, put your initials down there or your full name. I'm just gonna put mine down here. And that completes, that completes uh, the whole project.
So I hope everybody had fun. And like I said, if you want to either join my free group and post your painting, or you can uh, just post it under this video once it's uh, posted back up, um, the replay is up, then you can just put it under there. Uh, and then I can, I'll make like a little video and share the Christmas paintings. But um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget this Saturday if you want to join the snowman challenge that is going on. That is um, also, there's a replay available. So if you can't make it that night, you can view it, um, paint it on your own, and then um, just have it in by December 30th for a chance to win an Amazon gift card. Um, and then I also have next Tuesday a red truck event coming up. That one is also $10. So if you just go on my page under events, you'll see all my free ones, all my ones that are um, $10, and feel free to join anything that you would like. Have a great weekend, and uh, it was fun painting with everybody as always. I will see you soon.